Welcome back to Lonely Man BG's and this video on the last bottle of rum. So let's say you're a pirate and let's say you love rum. Also, let's say there is a singular bottle of rum left in the entire archipelago. You might just be willing to trade all the booty in the world for that rum. In the last bottle of rum, each player will take the role of a ship captain, searching the seas and the islands of the archipelago for booty. The player who reaches 10 booty points first earns the last bottle of rum and wins the game. At the beginning of the game, each player starts out at the pirate's hideout, a safe place where ships cannot be attacked. This is also where the captains return in order to sell the treasures they collect later on in the game. Each player also receives four action cards to their starting hand. These represent the main mechanism of the game. On a player's turn, they first draw cards from the action deck if they have less than four. The player then must play two action cards at the same time. Each of these action cards has a list of actions shown on their left hand side that the player can take on their turn. The Island Postal Service card, for example, allows the player to gain a doubloon, sell their ship, and repair damage. The Bomb card allows the player to attack another boat within range. In addition, each card has a special effect that the captain may trigger if they pay its cost, shown at the bottom. The Spyglass effect allows the player to reveal all unexplored tiles surrounding them for the cost of two doubloons. Some cards can be aggressive, with the Bomb forcing all other players to draw a damage token. Let's go through each of the actions players are able to take, starting with Sail. Using the Sail action, a player may sail onto an adjacent tile, even if it's occupied by other players. As a player moves through unexplored tiles, they are flipped over. Some of these tiles will have islands. At the beginning of the game, a number of cards equal to the player count are drawn from both the map deck and treasure deck. These are coupled together like this. If a captain ever steers his ship to an island matching a map card currently displayed, the captain takes the attached map card and a new card couple comes out. A player may only ever hold a number of treasures equal to slots on their player board. Taking a look at the treasure cards, each has a booty point value it is worth if sold at the pirate's hideout. The player earns that number of booty points when the treasure is sold. The second action is to gain a doubloon. The player takes doubloons equal to the number on the symbol. The third action is to attack another boat. In order to attack another player, the captain needs to have a number of attack symbols equal to the tiles between the boats. For example, this ship is two tiles away, therefore the attacking captain needs two attack symbols to attack them. For each attack, the player must also discard one doubloon. When attacking, this die is rolled. For a value of 0, the attack misses and nothing happens. At value 1, the targeted ship must draw one random damage token from the damage bag. At value 2, two tokens are drawn. Each of these tokens has an area on the ship represented where the damage from the fired cannonball took place. For example, if the sail of the ship is torn, the player may move only once during their turn, or if the cannons are destroyed, the ship can no longer attack. These tokens can accumulate on the player board. The fourth action is to repair one of the damaged areas of the ship. With this action, the player removes one damage token from their player board. Once the final token on a slot is removed, the effect is no longer afflicted to the ship. In addition to the boat status, each captain board also has a constant ability that is always in play. For instance, the turtle player may carry three treasures on its boat. Our final duty is to take a quick look at curses and the kraken. Some abilities and effects increase a player's curse value throughout the game. This attracts the Kraken. If a player ever draws one of these Kraken cards or reaches a limit of 5 curses, the Kraken immediately attacks. The player or players with the highest curse values are targeted and the die is rolled. They then lose booty points and curses equal to the value of the dice, so it's important for players to manage their curses lest they wish to be slighted by slimy Kraken tentacles. This concludes our video on the last bottle of rum. If you wish to learn more, be sure to check out the links in the description below to the Kickstarter and BoardGameGeeks page. Thanks for watching.